One of the most powerful aspects of using Production Assistant with Sony Vegas Pro software is the fact that you can pre-edit or pre-build your project before you ever put media on the timeline. Now the magic that allows this to happen is when you build templates that work for the kinds of projects that you're most commonly working with. Now if you're doing things that have got lots and lots of different kinds of cuts, then the templates might not be of particular benefit to you. However, you might want to check out how they'll work within your workflow. So the first thing we need to do is to build a template. So let's start out by building templates. We're going to start inside of Vegas Pro software itself without even touching Production Assistant. Let's get to it. We're going to open up Vegas Pro. Let's start with a blank project. So the first thing that we want to do is decide how we want our project to lay out. I'm going to insert a couple of new tracks. So just control shift Q to insert some new tracks. And for instance, it might be that I want to have 10 seconds of uh, color bar before my project begins. So I'm just simply going to zoom in and create a 10 second slot here. And right click in the first one and choose insert generated media. This is going to allow me to stick in a test pattern. There we go, and I simply want the Simpty bars in there as my test pattern. Great, I've got that set up. Next, I'm going to drop in some media here so that I know that I've got my tones because I do like having tones in there. So let's go grab my tones. We'll grab a 1K test tone here. We'll match that up to our 10 seconds. Great, so we've got that. Now let's uh, throw in a couple of seconds of black. So we've got uh, basically a two pop there. So inserts of generated media, solid color. Just choose black, there we go. Now we've got our tones, our two seconds of black. Great, now let's start choosing what are the things that we want to put into our project here. And I think I want to start with some of this Art Beats Real Fire. There we go. Drop that in. So now we've got our two pop. And there goes our, our uh, fire that we want in our project there. Great, that looks awesome. Next, let's go find some music that we want to stick in there as well. Great, so now we've got some music. We're going to drop that on the same line that we're using for our tones. Here comes our two pop. And there's our explosive action. Now as we go through this, in this particular template, what I want to have happen is I want to have whatever media we import cut to all of the different marker points or to the different beats that are in our music. So I'm going to go through and just drop some beats in real quickly so that you can see how this works. We'll speed through this as best we can. Let's start it right after our flames. Okay, so we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is fade this audio out. So let's split the audio off. We'll delete it. We're going to fade this out. The reason I've laid these markers in is, for instance, I might want to use this particular piece as a way of creating an intro for a weekly segment or an episodic piece. But I want things that are related to the episode I'm showing to be showing up inside of my, my media or inside my opening. So in other words, I can't just have a stock opening that I'm going to work with as it changes every week. So I can use the same music and I can use the same intro piece of video and same titling and so forth, but I want to be able to change that media out for every week. So let's look at how quickly this can go. So we're going to save this off as our, our bumper piece or our opening intro piece. So let's go to File, Save As, and here we need to browse until we come to My Documents, Sony, Production Assistant 1.0, 
project templates. We're going to call this opening segment. And I'm going to put width markers in there. I'm going to choose save there. Okay. Now we're going to go through and we're going to insert blank media for each one of these marker pieces that are in here. Let's trim this up. And we'll just zoom in a little bit more deeply so that we can get in between each marker. Right click and choose insert empty event. Okay, we'll do the same thing over here. Insert empty event. We're going to go through and we're going to create an empty event between each of these markers. Just like you see here. Okay, now we've created an empty event in between each of the markers. Now in this particular case, my empty events don't include audio because I'm only using the audio that's underneath. However, if we want audio included as we're bringing in our media to the file, we're going to need to create an audio track complete with empty events. So let's do that just for the sake of showing you how it works. So we're going to right click this audio track and choose insert audio track. And again, we'll slide back here to the beginning going to do the same thing again here. We'll double click, right click, and choose Insert Empty Event. Now a tip that you can pull here is by simply holding the control key, you can drag and make a copy. So holding control, drag, and make a copy, and then just fit that copy in between the markers. This is another thing that you can do. And then finally, the next tip is if the audio that will be going on this track needs to be associated with the video up here, the next thing we need to do is group these things together. So we're going to select the two, choose group, select the next two, choose group, the next two, choose group, the next two, choose group. And again, we can drag and drop these in. So for instance, if we simply delete these next files that are down here and we control and drag to create these events, we can drag them and drop them into place together and trim them as empty events on the timeline and they'll stay in there as groups. So this is just a, a quicker way or another way that you can create these groups. Okay, so we've got these built up. Let's go to File, Save As, and again we're going to go to the Project Templates and we're going to choose to call this Opening Segment with Markers. Okay, Save. It tells us that we've already written it and uh, do we want to overwrite it? We're going to choose Yes, we want to overwrite. Now we'll close Vegas down. So let's launch Production Assistant and now we're going to go in and choose Opening Segment with Markers and project name we'll call this Opening Segment Test and let's go add some files to our media. Now instead of working with these MXF files that we worked with before, let's go grab some other media. And we'll choose just a few pieces of video here. We'll just grab them at random. And we can make them be as, as random as we want, again, by moving them around here in the, the uh, settings by just using our up, down arrows. Choose OK. This is going to launch Vegas. It's telling us that we selected more media than we have blank slots for, so I'm just going to tell it OK. There's our opening segment completely pre-built. Now you'll notice that this is 4 by 3 media going into a widescreen project. We can also set up to correct for that. So we'll go back and do that in just a moment. But you can get an idea here how these templates can be used to build up whatever it is that you're trying to do. So let's set that template up so that anything that is brought in matches the project aspect ratio. We've got this media on the timeline. Some of it's 16 by 9, some of it's 4 by 3. And actually our 16 by 9 footage isn't quite 16 by 9. This is HD. You can see that we've got six pixels on either side that are, are not laid in correctly. That's because of the difference in pixel aspect ratio between this particular type of media and uh, widescreen DV, which is what our project is set up to be. So how do we make all of this match up and, and come into line together? 
There's a couple of ways that we can do this, but the easiest way is to simply use production assistance tool. Because we have several different aspect ratios, here we have a true NTSC DV widescreen uh, color bar setup, and the same thing can be said for our, our black two seconds here. But if we look at this uh, fire file that we've got going on here, you can see that we've got uh, some media off to the side where we've got six pixels on either side. This is because the media is 1920 by 1080 and we're dropping it into a, a DV widescreen project. So the aspect ratio doesn't quite match. Obviously here we've got some four by three media. So let's just simply convert all of this. So let's go to production assistant in our docking window here. And the first thing we need to do is select use current project as source. This trips up a few users. Remember, Production Assistant can either work outside of Vegas or inside of Vegas. And so it's important that you check use the current timeline as the source so that it knows it's using media on the timeline as opposed to using media that's in the bins or in bins. So be sure that you check your source window so that you're using the timeline media as your source as opposed to an empty bin. All right, use current project as source. Let's check on processing. We need to add a process. Let's choose add. Let's go to the widescreen converter. And we also want to reduce interlaced flicker. This is a good idea anytime you're working with interlaced media as your source. And if it's going to the web, you might as well switch to 30p now. Choose OK. And that adds it to the process window. And now everything has been converted. So our files are native 16 by 9. But we haven't actually altered them, and now we're working with a progressive scan project as opposed to working with an interlaced based project. All right, so we've created this in here. It might be that we want to get rid of these markers. I don't necessarily like seeing those markers, so I'm going to simply make a selection and cover all the markers. Right click and go to Markers Regions and choose Delete All in Selection, and that gets rid of all of them. And all of my cuts were still there. Now, we also are not using any audio with this particular track, so we can right click and choose delete track. And now we've got our beginning segment that we can drop in any number of ways to a, a current project. So we've got our little 10 second uh, color bar there, two seconds of black, and here comes our project. And we can overlay our titles on top of that. And that's all there is to creating templates. Now keep in mind with templates we can get a lot more complex. And in the extras folder on this DVD or downloadable uh, from the web, you can download some other project types, some extreme sports kinds of things and things with lower thirds already laid in and so forth. Things that are already completely done for you. But you'll probably find it best to create templates that work with your workflow and your type of episodic or segmented or package based media. And you'll store those in that My Documents, Sony, in the Production Assistant 1.0 folder in your Project Templates folder. And that'll allow you to recall them every time you open up Production Assistant.